Hey, podcast listeners. Long time no see. I'm sorry that it's been so long for us to get an episode out to you, but this is, as you know, a private uh, hobby of mine <laughs> that has never been sponsored. It's never been uh, paid, so it's a free resource, along with our YouTube channel, which has been exploding, and we've been really trying to show exactly what we've been doing with our life, doing the tiny lab tour and doing the TV show and all that stuff. And in case you're not familiar with that, that's Proof is Possible Tour. You can see that at proofispossible.com. TV show is Home Diagnosis. You can see that at homediagnosis.tv. We also even now have a Patreon page where you can participate with us and help kind of be part of the production team for the the TV show, which is going into its second season. That's at patreon.com slash homediagnosistv. So today we're going to start a new tradition. We have a new person who is joining our uh, show and it's going to change format. So instead of being an interview show where I'm asking questions of other people, what we're doing now that we have the television show is turning it into a uh, call-in show, essentially, except it's a write-in show. And so, uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce the co-host for today, Grace Lunsford. Hello, everyone. Grace is the co-host of Home Diagnosis. As you may know, she is my bride. We <laughs> are celebrating 15 years of marriage. Can't believe that. Yeah. And um, so what we're going to do is we have collected a bunch of questions from people who have seen Home Diagnosis on PBS. It's been airing for about six months now. Mm-hmm. And uh, they have specific questions about home performance to do with their own home or a home that they've encountered and they want to know the answers to them. So we're going to kind of like go through these and talk about the different elements and the different characteristics of what, uh, and also the different impacts of what kind of solutions we might be recommending. Um, So let's go ahead and dive in. Okay. So I'm going to start with Lynn's question. How do I find someone who gives a flip about my home? I live in the Midwest and my local utility company basically shrugged their shoulder and recommended a device to see how much electricity my appliances use when I requested an energy audit. Okay. There's a lot of things going on here. Right. So the first thing is a device, like the whole thing that you and I talk about on the right. television show is that this is not, number one, it's not a scalable resource. Mm-mm. You can't train a bunch of employee type people to be home performance experts because frankly, it takes too much yeah, training and, takes too and much time. there's been a couple of big companies who've tried to do it, but you, you frankly just can't do it at the same kind of retail hourly wage because it takes knowledge, it takes endurance, and it, it you get what you pay for. Yes, there are no prescriptive solutions for home performance. There are prescriptive solutions for things like energy efficiency, which is where maybe the, the utility, the utility company, company was, was confused yeah. about what she was looking for. Um, she wants to find somebody who gives a flip about her home. <laughs> and so, of course, where she turns is the one place where she's heard anybody talk about this until she saw our show. And so the difference in energy efficiency and home performance we go into in season two yeah. of Home Diagnosis pretty early. It's uh, episode two. We're about to film that actually next week. But uh, but I think, and, and I love that she actually used the word flip because this is all about language. If you don't know what to ask for, if you don't know what to to say when you call the utility company, uh, you're not really looking for an energy audit, are you? Exactly. Or if you get an an addition, a renovation, you buy a new home and you think you've asked for one that is high performance, but you Mm -hmm. haven't used the right language in the way, like we're even so specific that we say you should know what blower door number you are asking for. And there are ways to do that. You can first of all download the uh, proof is possible booklet from the front page of home diagnosis.tv. Mm-hmm. You can take a five port uh, email uh, series on how to kind of like get yourself more of a crash course. We even have a crash course that is a four module video series about that, but like getting normal people to understand how to talk about right. this with so professionals. You're not asking for an energy audit. You're asking for a comprehensive home performance assessment, which is kind of a mouthful. But if you can just remember home performance, I think those are the keywords that are going to really start moving forward. Yeah. And hopefully if you use that as a term to search for, that might help you to get in the right direction because there are for sure are contractors out there who can do this kind of stuff. But you, you know, hopefully we, we're presenting to realtors on a regular basis. We're presenting to other builders and contractors. And it's our hope that this language is is going to catch on. But honestly, we need the homeowners to be asking for it. Yeah, to be pushing it forward. Okay, next question. 
This is from Marks. Great show. I have just one question. What is the best way or product to provide fresh air ventilation and exhaust in the bathroom and kitchen as I'm concerned that I will simply be creating pathways for heat to escape in the winter? Awesome. Great question, Marks. So this is, mm, there's like some things that we need to talk about. First of all, every home in the universe, (laughs) on other planets too, needs two things. They need some kind of a heating and cooling mechanism to maintain somewhere between 60 and 80 degrees because we don't want people suffering from heat stroke. We don't want people suffering from cold exposure. So there's one. The second thing is you have to have point exhaust, like source exhaust, where you are creating generally moisture, which is bathrooms and kitchens. And that should be going outside. There's been a lot of people cutting corners by giving us... uh, recirculating kitchen exhausts. And that's partly because we have not been asking for the good stuff. They right. think that that's that we don't care. I mean, the air is blowing around. The yucky stuff seems to be dissipating. So you think, yeah, that works, right? If you're trying to catch grease, then a <laughs> grease trap, <laughs> yeah. which is like that, you know, that funky little uh, thing in your microwave mesh. over the oven. Yeah, exactly. That you wash that uh, theoretically, right? Once every month or something, which you don't. Um, that's okay. But what you need to understand is, first of all, every home needs those two things. Higher performance homes, and, and this is where Mark's your home would be the uh, key point that we would need to know in order to suggest something. If your home is a high performance home, meaning that it's air, more airtight than a normal conventional home, and that's typically we're going to be talking about like five air changes per hour or less. That's a blower door metric. You need to have a blower to to know what your house actually is. That's the whole point of the the show and, and ever all the work we do, but. If your home is a higher performance home, meaning less than five air changes per hour, then you need a couple extra things. You need uh, ventilation. And that is uh, partly he asked specifically about fresh air ventilation. And the term fresh is kind of... mm. (laughs) So if you live in California and you're around wildfires in the summertime... Do you really want that fresh air? Outside air is not fresh. Inside air is fresh, right? So you, you don't go outside. So the idea of mechanical ventilation just air exchange is an important one. So you would need a mechanical ventilation system. There's a couple different types to do that. You can have air just sent out with bath fans running all the time. That's depressurizing your house and sucking air in through all the gaps and cracks. You could pressurize your house, meaning you just bring air in on purpose and then air gets out through all the gaps and cracks. Both of those have issues with them. Or you can have an equalized system, which is where it's equalizing the pressure by bringing in the same air that it takes out And also trying to equalize the pressure, the temperature and humidity of the air streams that are as they come and go. Um, The third, a third thing that you would need is some kind of a dehumidification system. Right. Because moisture is just the big thing that will create so much glorious chemistry and um, microbiology in your home. Exactly. And so you need to control that because you are hanging on to a lot more moisture if you're high performance like we are. We're talking to you from this tiny lab right now. And so the last piece is pressure equalization, which we addressed kind of in that equalizing ventilator, which is called an HRV or an ERV. So that's kind of the the gamut. But you would need some of that stuff. You can see how to select and and size a kitchen exhaust hood on our YouTube channel. You should go check that out right now. We're in the process of making a bath fan selection and placement video. And but. and right now it's actually just in case you're listening in the future it is 2019 we're coming up on Memorial Day and right now one of the lead videos on our page is all about ventilation we take it very seriously yes and that's the home performance YouTube channel so I would go check those out marks and um, that should help you all right our next question comes from Lessa do the dark spots on the first floor ceiling mean the bathrooms from the second floor are leaking in my 100 year old home. Also, the ceiling leaks when the tub or shower on the second floor overflows. Is this a problem? Yes, this is a problem. (laughs) If you have water, liquid water leaking in your house, nothing else matters. You need to fix that. Lessa, you know this is a problem. Yeah, you know. Yeah, we're calling you on this one. (laughs) So, so yes, they are a problem. Um, Probably it means that, yes, they're leaking. Um, You know, this is the kind of question, though, that's really interesting to me because it's a it hints at some deeper pathos. Mm -hmm. Like people will come, you know, the the worst mistake that a lot of new business owners in this space will make is you go to a trade show, like a green 
DIY yeah. show. And you, uh, we did all the it. People who walk by your table, you say, I can find problems in your home. no no one wants to talk to you so right well and they know they've got problems exactly and so when you get somebody like this who knows they have some problems and they're asking the home diagnosis people she's not asking a plumber who would know just as well if not better than we do she's come to a home as a system type of a person to ask and this is the gold mine if you have this kind of a practice and you get questions like this that seem pretty obvious they're asking you. They're not mm-hmm. calling a plumber. Like this is a special opportunity to kind of say, well, there's a whole thing. And we go into the four, three, two, one. We talk about moisture interacting with air quality. Mm-hmm. When you up the moisture in a house, especially with a liquid water leak or an open dirt crawl space, you're going to be uh, re-emitting more chemicals off of surfaces. And the amount of surface to volume ratio inside of a home is gigantic compared to outside. So the indoor pollution is a much more sensitive and fast moving thing. It's like, it's it's much quicker than outdoor uh, chemistry. Anyway, all that to say, yes, this is an issue. Yes, you came to the right place. Yes, you could get your, your home looked at as a comprehensive thing. Obviously, this is an issue, but probably there are more. Uh, I'm going to point out one more thing in her question. My 100-year-old home. Uh, I was born and raised. My parents still live in our 100-year-old home. Um, we have bees in the wall. That's our current problem right now. But the reason I bring it up is old homes, all hope is not lost. And that's really what I, I just want to encourage there. Old homes can be fixed. It's Again, it's a systems thinking. And um, when you come at it from a holistic viewpoint, you can really solve the problem. Okay. Our next question comes from Dave. Quick question. I don't have the money to pump insulation into the cavities of my exterior walls. The house was built in 1962 and the insulation was garbage to begin with. Now it's even worse. What is your opinion of getting someone or myself to pump some insulation into some cold spots? Great question. You came to the right place. Our answer may be obvious. <laughs> We're going to say, test it. Test it. Test because it. The, the term garbage, the insulation was garbage when it was installed. Mm. I don't know. I, we would need to look at it. Yeah. I mean, there's it, brand new insulation can become garbage if it's been squished, 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 yeah. squished just into a cavity. Just it's old doesn't mean that it's bad. The main ingredient that you are buying when you buy insulation is not fiberglass or rock wool or whatever it is that you think it is. It's air bubbles. Air. So if you have air bubbles in it, it doesn't matter how old it is. Frankly, you know, it could be a million years old, theoretically, and it wouldn't matter as long as it's still nice and fluffy. Right. So when we say test it, what we mean is specifically a blower door test plus an infrared scan. And the blower door specifically is running in depressurization mode so that you can see the insulation from inside. If you do that and you find out that the insulation, yeah, it's a little bit crappy. Like it's not the best ever, but it's not like it's missing. What would happen, first of all, if you call a company that can inject insulation, and this is generally going to be either fiberglass or cellulose or spray foam. What If you ask them, do you think this would help? They're going to say. Yeah, yeah. And we can help you finance it. <laughs> Right. So, so yes, you're going to be spending money. You're going to be spending potentially a lot of money on something that actually might not help you that much. Because if, and first of all, we have seen spray foam installed really badly. Yeah. Um, because it's injected, it's another kind of layer of secrecy. And people can do a bad job with something that mm-hmm. you can't see. And you can't see it, so you're still going to pay them. You know, and it's also a science experiment. Yes. This is one of the big things that a lot of people forget about um, doing foam because you can go to Home Depot and get two part. You can mix it yourself. I mean, we've even done it on on our, some of our right. earlier videos. And here, if you're going to inject it, though, then it's a low rise. It's a low pressure foam. That's really important because. It, it's a little different. It's like the difference in you know one part foam between the window and door foam and the normal spray foam. It's the same kind of chemistry. Um, so uh, another thing that I just want to go ahead and bring up too is is about heat flow. It's it's not linear, and um, this is one of those things that we need to remember with our home is that if your home was not rigid in the summer, it would look like a. In the summer, it would look like a pear. And in the winter, it would turn into a big, giant, hot Hot air air balloon. balloon. Right. 
So that, because there's more air in one place than another. So the idea that it's insulation, like when pe- you know people walk into our house. By the way, we're parked right now next to the busiest airport in the world. Can you hear it? The tiny lab is super airtight. It's not super insulated. We do not have R60 walls. We have R15 insulation in every cavity in this house. And this microphone that we're talking into, we have two microphones actually. Mm -hmm. Each of them is only three feet away from a wall or a ceiling. In fact, both. You can't hear the planes that are going by. And that's not insulation. That's airtightness. So the idea that insulation will solve all things is kind of a fallacy. So I would say that Mm -hmm. definitely make sure, Dave, that you have looked into that as a potential uh, with the blower door test, which is why we always recommend that. If you're looking at enclosure stuff, you'll always want to know about the air sealing before the insulation. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Dave. Our next question is from James. Hey, I just finished watching your show on HVAC issues, which I feel like is every show of ours. Um, My mom's home was built back in the 50s and has been remodeled and is still having issues in the rooms above the crawl space. I've had the crawl space encapsulated. I have had extra attic insulation added and had new furnace. I have a new furnace that was installed just seven years ago, but we're still having issues. Mom's on hospice, and I'm afraid to get her into the colder parts of the house for fear she'll get sick. Yikes. So that... Uh, First whole, of all, James, I'm so sorry. That's terrible. But yeah, she. it's her home. She should be enjoying every minute of it and not be afraid to be going into certain parts that are cold. And this is a classic, you know, James, you are a victim of the mentality that has been running the home improvement Mm. and Mm -hmm. building um, front for homeowners for a long time, which is that there are certain prescriptive steps that everyone should take to make their home better. And I'm making quotes in the air right now. And the idea, you've done everything right. You added attic insulation. I'm sure you got a tax break from the government for doing that. You had the crawl space encapsulated, which is always a good thing to do. And you had a new furnace installed. And that also is common knowledge to be a brilliant thing to do. Everyone should do it. Yeah. Those things actually don't work a lot of the time. First of all, attic insulation. Grace, if I add two feet of attic insulation... Does it? And don't air seal anything. <laughs> what can I grow in my attic as a result? Uh, all kinds of really delicious things that you catch with all the moisture that will be trapped in that lovely attic insulation. Exactly. So I did something good to my home, but something bad happens as a result. This is a key component of home performance. Mm. Everything has a side effect. And probably uh, the HVAC issue episode that you're talking about, I'm guessing is the Chicago one where she had just had a new furnace, but it wasn't really matched up to the ducks. Right. And also how exactly it's installed is really important because, yeah, as a system, as Grace says, the ducts are the circular, are the, the veins and arteries of the system. And just because you replace the heart, you could replace your own heart with an, an Olympic athlete's heart and it wouldn't necessarily make you higher performance because you're, it's a system, right? right. Everything is a system. You need to be specific. One size does not fit all. Yes. And the third thing is having the crawl space encapsulated. What exactly does that mean is the question. Mm-hmm. Did, did you test before and after. And I don't mean you, I mean, did they test before and after? And if they did not, they're guessing they could, it could look good. There's a rule that we're building a house 50 feet away from where we're sitting out in the yard, um, for our family, because right now we're in 200 square feet. We're looking forward to our 3000 square feet. And there's, I'm, I'm learning a lot about carpentry and there's like a rule in carpentry. If it looks good, it is good. (laughs) 99% of the time that is true. When you're talking about rough carpentry, if we're talking about home performance, just because something looks good has nothing, nothing to do. In fact, it's almost an inverse relationship, right? Sometimes, yeah. One of the houses that Grace and I are going to be driving by next week with our film crew taking shots of for the yeah, mm-hmm. the uh, episodes in season two is a Victorian. And Victorian houses are like, right, they're gingerbread houses. They're notoriously very beautiful. And everybody mm-hmm. loves blah, blah, all the turrets. And, the, and a house like that is going to have way more problems performance wise than a home that's very simple looking. Well, more and more seams create more and more opportunities for failure. Yes. And so sorry, she's got, she's gotten sick. Definitely do take that seriously. The the, the health aspects of what we're talking about are the more important than anything else. Absolutely. And I'm going to do one more thing, Corbett. James has kind of set us up for this wonderful thing. If you do want to get your crawl space encapsulated and you said, did they do any testing? 
back to language, what testing are they looking for? What numbers do they want to say? Because if I call a, a company and say, do you test your work before and after? They'll be like, yeah, sure, we test. Right. It's the same thing, ultimately, as far as rough carpentry goes again. As you know, you measure twice, you cut once. That's <laughs> not a recipe for success. What you do after that is you measure again to make sure you did a good job. That's what this is. So basically, blower door test should go down. Zonal pressure test should show that the crawl space after encapsulation is 95% connected to the house, meaning less than 5% connected to the outside. That would be a metric that I would just put in the contract. You are going to have contractors run away from you when you do that. But the, the kind of people who are listening to this mm-hmm. podcast are the kind of people who actually can deliver that kind of stuff and they know it. And they're, mm-hmm. sometimes they're not that great at marketing. And if you're one of those people, please remember you need to practice marketing and stuff because there are people looking for you. They want they are you looking so for you. And and if you're one of those people looking for this person and you don't really know how to look for them, you can go to home diagnosis.tv slash pro. And right there, we give you all the directions to find a professional in your area. All right, James, I hope that gets better. And I hope your mom is feeling better. All right, David is our next question. We have a 2,000 square foot shop house that drips water from the attic into the living space below. We have tried everything we know to try and solve the condensation problems. All the contractors and the builder of the shell that we have asked about a solution, well, they can't seem to tell us anything. We need help. Cool. We don't know what a shop house is exactly, but uh, eh, it's a workshop it's probably. Fine. This probably, and by the way, this is the last question on this. We're going to go about 20 minutes with these Q and A's. So we'll pick up again next episode with more. But, uh, as far as David's question goes, first of all, this is the whole thing Mm -hmm. is that you'll have people, you know, there's like three steps to be, uh, for the protocol for any home performance pro. Number one is inspection. In fact, pre inspection, it's listening. Mm. And one of the rookie mistakes that I used to make when I went into homes and, you know, grace would kind of like give me the look when mm-hmm. I open my big fat mouth and somebody says, what, you know, Oh my, this wall is cold over here. What do you think? And I would go, Oh, it's probably blah, 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 blah. And I would show off my little building science knowledge. You can't do that. You got to just listen and say, and if they say, what do you think it is? You say, well, the testing will tell us. Right. I have to wait until I test. So first is inspection. You look at the house, make sure you know where the enclosure is supposed to be. Then you run test. Then you make recommendations. Most people in the building industry run straight to the recommendations, that rookie mistake, and they'd never seem to learn it if they don't know how to work diagnostics. And, and this is the crazy thing. This is why in an ex-professional piano player for dancers can win every single argument with a builder who's been doing it for 40 years if that builder doesn't test. They don't know. That's part of the reason that we were able to <laughs> – it was kind of a joke – um, it was a way to just kind of disrupt the conversation around mm-hmm. the country. But we took this tiny lab around to 25 states on our tour, and we would get out and say, this is the best house you have ever been in. And no one can argue with us because they don't have stats. They don't have the metrics that show what the house is actually doing. We know all about the pressures and the air flows and the moisture levels and the radon levels, the carbon dioxide and the particulate, blah, 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 about this house. And, and that's the thing that really we want to get people hooked on. Uh, There's one last thing that I just want to touch on with this, with condensation. There's really three things to look at. The temperature of the air, the temperature of surface, and the humidity of the air. Um, And so what you need to to just kind of break down for yourself is what are the solutions for this? Um, Because it's a very simple – it's made of very simple ingredients, any condensation. So Mm -hmm. the things you can do are either uh, stop or lower the moisture content, which means sealing up water leaks or sealing up air leaks because air carries a lot of moisture in it or from a house, right? Second thing is you can raise the temperature of the surface by insulating it. And that's where people are like, oh, we should add insulation to our house. But the third thing that you can also do is raise the temperature of the air. And this is kind of a weird mm. thing. That is not an energy efficient fix. But if you were to raise the temperature of the air, it actually turns the air into a sponge and it can soak up more moisture before it spills it out onto the surface. And I'm not saying that that's a good solution. I'm just saying we need to expand our minds a little right. bit. There are Think plenty of clients that Grace and I have that will come to us and say, hey, my living room is cold um, and I am going to move out of this place in three years and I don't have kids and I'm home only at nights. And we would say, don't waste your time or money trying to figure out how to fix a, a building that has designed flaws 
put into it. Like the, these flaws are built into this home. Um, what you need to do is go out and buy some space heaters and plug them in. Yeah. And just keep your – like whatever it takes. If you need to be warm, be warm. But you cannot fix some houses because they have flaws designed into them. If, you're gonna, if you've got unlimited funds and unlimited time, great. Do it. But I think that a lot of the time we need to – that's why Grace and I can't have used homes. For example. <laughs> we have to start from scratch because we know all the things that could go wrong. Right. But if you don't have that luxury of the time and effort to be able to build your own home like we are, uh, take your home, make a list of symptoms, make a list of your assumptions – and then test. Yes. And find you, a professional who can test for you. Yes. And if it's a mystery problem, you'll find out that one of your assumptions is wrong. Generally, that's always the case. And it'll be a, kind of an obvious one that'll uh, come to the fore. So that's the for- new format of our show. And we're yeah. going to pick up with more questions in the next episode. If, if this really sparked your brain on home performance and you're like, ah, oh, I want to know more, but I, do I just fall down the rabbit hole of your YouTube channel? Yeah, y- you could do that. But we've also created a curated course specifically for homeowners. It's tangible. It's a crash course. You can go to homediagnosis.tv and find it. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys very much for listening. I hope that you tune in next time.